Welcome back, everyone. Chris Matthew with Forbidden Knowledge News. I am having an absolutely amazing time here at the Laughlin UFO Conference. And look at who I'm here with, the one and only Richard Dolan. Mr. Dolan, you had such an amazing presentation. Thanks, Chris. Uh, it was kind of long. I did about two hours and talking about uh, it's a lot of different things, but particularly where we headed in the entire panoply of UFO disclosure and where is it likely to lead and we're going to get disclosure or are we going to make a psyop of some sort and we're going to see truth or we're not going to see truth and a lot of other things. Right, and I really enjoyed when you were talking about how uh, when FOIA first opened their uh, access to the documents, how UFO researchers kind of flocked to that, yeah. you know. That was very interesting, even back in the day. Way back in the 70s, you know, freedom of information, we didn't always have it in our nation's history. It really only became strengthened in the mid-70s. And when it did, I think the big shocker was how UFO researchers jumped to the front of that line, honestly, and got thousands of pages of UFO documentation declassified and released to the public. Kind of amazing thing. I mean, none of them were like a real holy grail of like, oh my God, the aliens are here. Right. But uh, a lot of them were like one cut below that, which were like, holy crap, these objects are hanging out over our sensitive bases. They don't look normal and they can certainly instantly accelerate and do things that we don't know what they are. Like we had a number of those types of documents that came out uh, showing that and just showing high levels of government concern. It's important to understand that because in our era today, we're at this very interesting point in our public conversation about UFOs in which we're now able to talk a bit about UFOs and we're, you know, we can say, well, there's something out there and we don't know what these things are. Look, everyone having a conversation knows exactly what we're dealing with. They just can't say it. Mm -hmm. And some of them have security clearances and they, or they just feel constrained by the establishment culture. But the fact is when you go through the history of the documents, they prove, they don't suggest, they prove that our military establishment has been seriously concerned about UFOs for more than 75 years. Right. And they don't know how to deal with it. And the reports are plain as day, they're right there. So we really need to be much farther ahead in our public conversation on this subject. And the fact that we're not is a testament to the power of centralized control over the media, in my opinion. And the fact that uh, even alternative media, you know, this is going on YouTube, I'm assuming, and everything's seeing a clampdown. Everything's seeing non-authoritative sources of news, non-authoritative this and that, are being deplatformed and pushed to the sidelines more and more. I mean, right now you can get UFO information out there, but what if you go into deep conspiracies about UFOs? That's still that's still off limits in terms of you know public conversation. So we got a long way to go. Right, we certainly do. It is amazing time we're living in. Um, I love the fact when you brought up the, uh, the military um, and media kind of aspect that they're painting a threat to this. Now, um, I happen to agree with you. I think that you, they're just cautious. You know, they're, of course, you know, we have this unknown source coming into our airspace. Of course, we're going to be cautious. But I really like how you said, um, you know, that we should kind of not be a concern, so concerned with it fake alien invasion and things of this nature that uh, conspiracy, you know, cultures are trying to paint this as, right? I'm glad you mentioned this. So, yeah, I, I'll just put it right out here. I'm not a believe. First of all, I don't believe in the Project Blue Beam scenario. I think that is a bad joke. Um, say that strongly. I know the history of the Blue Beam idea. This is the fake alien invasion, holographic display that scares the shit out of you. So you go running to the state for protection. Right. And they create a totalitarian society. First of all, they don't need that. They're creating a totalitarian society right now. All right. It's already happening. Right. You do not need an alien invasion to justify that. We've seen it. COVID helped to justify that, frankly. Uh, but furthermore, the, the concept of this alien invasion idea as a false flag comes from 1994-95 by a man who's long deceased named Serge Monast, who lived in Quebec. And uh, look, I'll just tell you, if you if you do not know who he was, go read some of his writings. And I don't want to speak ill of someone who's not alive anymore, but I think in a lot of his writings, it's totally unhinged. And I'm just sorry, it has to be said. His original idea of Bluebeam wasn't even an alien invasion. It was a, a fake second coming of Jesus 
to uh, help create the new world order. And that would be in Western countries where people believe in Christianity, even though in Western countries, 90% of the people or more probably don't believe in that anyway. But then you go into the other uh, societies and he said, well, they'll use, they'll use other religious icons. And, like it didn't make any sense. And he said things like, well, they'll create fake archeological discoveries to deceive mankind from the path of God or something like that. Like, what are you talking about? And then yes, there's aliens thrown in the mix there too. But it, like, it obviously never happened. He was expecting that the 2000 Y2K year. And that didn't happen. And that morphed into an alien invasion idea. And I just think, look, you, look, you go into the origins of Bluebeam and it's just, it's not there. It's like sand going through your fingers. Now, that doesn't, doesn't mean that there aren't psyops. And it doesn't mean that, that it, it's, you know, it's impossible that the government would want to scare you or would want to scare you for aliens. Maybe they would. But you look at what's happened in the last three and a half years of this so-called threat narrative. And what is the threat narrative? Like every once in a while, Lou Elizondo will say, yeah, it's a potential threat. Well, holy hell, man. You know, in my first two volumes of history, all I did was delineate one military encounter with UFOs after another. If you're a military person, you would be criminally negligent if you did not consider this a potential threat. I mean, that's... You can disagree with it. You can say from your perch, well, they're obviously not a threat, but who the hell are you? If you're a military person and your job is to defend your airspace or your nation, you, you're, you have to consider the potentiality that these objects have incredible capabilities, which by the way, are sometimes swarming around your vessels and your aircraft. Of course, it's a potential threat. Like, absolutely it is. That doesn't mean we're expecting Independence Day and you know the aliens blowing up the White House or the Pentagon or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't think Elizondo's expecting that any more than anyone else. But threat can be perceived in multiple ways. Uh, but furthermore, in terms of it being a PSYOP or a false flag to scare people, uh, well, if, if that's the idea, then they're doing a pretty awful job because it's three and a half years and who the hell is scared? Exactly. Right? And if you're talking about a false flag, which is something I have studied a great deal of, with any false flag, you have to have a complete, you need a media, rollout that is at least somewhat coordinated and rapid fire, by the way, that is going to elicit genuine fear and an immediate response from the public. People think about 9-11 or which, yes, I absolutely count that as one where the hammer comes down over your head in the form of propaganda. All the networks, all the sources of media are like one voice. Mm -hmm. And the culprit is identified immediately and actions taken immediately. And terror and trauma are inflicted on the public immediately. We're not getting any of that. And you're not even getting a coordinated media response right. in terms of this. The last two pieces that the New York Times came out with, they weren't threat narratives at all. They were in fact they were dialing it down significantly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like UFOs don't necessarily mean aliens. Well, all right. So where are we going here? Obviously, there's not, if, if anything, if there's a PSYOP involved, which, look, when you're talking about the New York Times, you always have to look at that. Uh, but the PSYOP, in my view, is there's no threat that they're, they're dialing it down. So I just don't see this. Um, you know, I, I, just, I just don't see it. And I'm not averse to thinking it's possible, but the fact is, in my view, the people who are saying this is a threat scenario and it's a false flag, like, Start bringing some evidence out. Bring out some evidence <laughs> and like give us something to work with because right now we're not getting anything to work with in that regard. And what I'm seeing instead, the last thing I'll say here, because I'm going to sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but um, rather than pretending that you know how to crawl inside the head of someone else and know their secret motivations, which is what we're really hearing here, why don't we just listen to the information that they're giving us and check the information, corroborate it, or disprove it. If the information is true and useful, I take that as a win. And the fact is that in the last three and a half years, we have received a tremendous amount of genuine confirmed information that, I mean, we have a long, long way to go here, but we are, we've gone much further than we have ever been prior to 2017. Now, one thing I'll just mention is that this makes me sound like some utopian optimist, like, oh, yeah, we're going to have disclosure. And in fact, I'm the opposite of that. I, I don't believe we're going to have disclosure, not anything meaningful. I think that we're moving into a global police state, frankly, digital control, where everyone's uh, 
you know, monitored, tagged, and bagged, and all their in information is data crunched. And that's a loss of freedom. And that goes against genuine disclosure, in my opinion. So I'm not expecting, I mean, anything's possible. If you get enough momentum, you could get some kind of forward moving avalanche effect. I hypothesized that in a book I wrote over a decade ago called After Disclosure. Now, that hasn't happened, that avalanche effect. I mean, it could, but it's also quite possible that we don't get there. And it's absolutely possible that even where we are now, you can start seeing the walk back. Right. It is not impossible to see a walking back even where we are. Now, one more thing before I let you go. Do you think that the world is ready? Do you think that the populace, that the majority of people are ready to hear that, uh, you know, we have extraterrestrial visitors? No one's ever going to be ready. You're never going to be ready. I'm ready. But that won't <laughs> stop it from happening. That's the thing. Like, yeah. no one's ready to have their first baby. Oh, you have it anyway. Yet. Like, no one's ready for a lot of things in this world. We're, we're very imperfect creatures, we human beings. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we don't have it all together. And uh, we're fixated on our own daily problems. And no, very few people have time to dive in and become a fanatic on a subject like this. I mean, right. that's just the reality. And it's unfair to expect people to, to do that. So, no, they're never going to be ready. Because this is a paradigm-shattering event. And there's going to be a lot of trauma. Like... Even if it's like great information, like they're here to save us, which it's not. Mm -hmm. No one's here to save. No. Uh, I think those are just foolish utopian ideas. Doesn't mean that they're here to eat us necessarily. I just, I don't know. But I guess what I'm saying is, man, I'm, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought there. But um, well, I was asking you if you're ready for it. You know? <laughs> oh no, right? We're, yeah. No, no one's. Look, honestly, I've been thinking about this for more than 25 years, and I don't think I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Like, if it actually truly comes out, like, it's going to be a very significant psychological adjustment. I mean, I've had several moments in my life where I've had to make psychological adjustments. In other words, where I've talked with people who I've given enough personal credibility to as insiders who have said things to me. Like, I, on one occasion many years ago, I had one very prominent person that I respected who said, I know for a fact that at deep, deep levels of our classified world that there are scientists who have in their possession alien technologies and at least one body that I personally know about. Exact words. Yeah. And when he said that to me, I had already suspected or pretty much thought I knew that that was the case. But it's different when someone tells you. When someone who you believe like confirms it, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and a full disclosure is like a thousand times greater than that experience for me. So it's going to be something that requires adjustment because we all have um, we all have a certain belief system that we get attached to and this is going to change it and for a little while we're all going to be free floating not knowing where the ground is where do you stand in this new world are we dealing with friends or foe threat or not threat we're naturally going to be asking that question and are we really going to have a firm answer right away i doubt it right so it's, it's very unsettling. And then on top of that, I mean, my goodness gracious. So as I've thought for a long time, UFOs get confirmed. Let's just say, okay, those flying saucers are real. And of course they are real. And uh, I've often wondered, so look, a 10 year old kid looking at a zigzagging, instantly accelerating object is gonna probably instinctively know it's not using gasoline to go from one place to another. So whatever it is, it's gonna require something new, something revolutionary. And once we confirm that, we're going to be looking in the likelihood of a post-petroleum energy paradigm, which is great. But even under the best circumstances, you change your energy system. You're, going to, you're transforming not just your global energy infrastructure. You're actually transforming the global financial system. And you're turning a lot of things topsy-turvy. And that's instability. And, and even positive instability can create problems. So that's best case scenario. It's just going to be difficult. And we shouldn't kid ourselves into thinking that disclosure is going to bring some kind of utopia. I don't, I don't believe utopians are good, <laughs> are healthy for our world, because first of all, utopians have been great, the greatest murderers in history. You know, every communist dictatorship was a utopia. Hitler was a utopian. They try to transform human nature into something that they think it should be. And and try to create what they think is a perfect world. 
bad idea. But uh, utopians also think, well, we're going to solve all of our problems. We're going to fix humanity. We're going to fix the flaws that are inherent in these dark hearts of ours. And we're going to make a society that's just going to be perfect and freedom and equality. And like, look, I don't know. I mean, I just don't think that's possible. I just don't. Um, I think I'm at a point in my life where I think let's make things practically better within reason. And don't overreach. You're probably going to screw things up. Yes, Mr. Dolan, that is very well said. I agree with you completely. Um, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you, Mark. Great presentation. Thanks very much. And I hope to talk to you again in the future. Appreciate it. Thanks, All everyone. Right. And everyone, we got a couple of days left. Come on out to this amazing conference. It's been fun. It has.